Do you see that speed difference? What? That is crazy. Is the new M1 iPad Pro worth $200 more than the iPad Air? Well, today we will find out because we're gonna compare everything from the differences in the displays, the, both the quality and the ProMotion on the iPad to the speakers, the design, Face ID versus Touch ID, and of course, the performance between the M1 chip and the A14. We're also gonna do a comparison video between all of the iPads, so if you guys wanna see that, click that subscribe button down down below and help us reach 1 million subscribers before the end of the year, we would greatly appreciate it. Now, looking at the fronts as I'm holding these, the one thing that you'll notice is that the bezel is slightly larger on the iPad Air. That's because as a 10.9 inch display compared to 11 inch, I think Apple just did that to differentiate them. Flipping over to the back of the iPads, you guys could see that the iPad Pro has a much bigger camera bump. That's because instead of just a standard camera, we have a higher quality standard and an ultra wide. And along with that, we have that LiDAR scanner, which is very useful for augmented reality applications. And we also have a flash right there, which can be handy for scanning documents. Now, as far as the weight and the thickness, they are basically identical. They're the same bodies. But one difference you could see here is that the speaker grills look different. Now we have some major differences and we'll be doing a speaker test in just a bit, but the iPad Pro has less speaker cutouts but it's very interesting that uh, they actually have four speakers on the iPad Pro, two on each side compared to the iPad Air, where there's actually only two speakers, one on each side. So one of these are completely fake. Now, as far as the ports, they look identical, but the iPad Pro actually has a Thunderbolt port, meaning it can go four times as fast as far as performance, and it can actually connect to more devices. And one of the biggest differences between these is Touch ID versus Face ID. The Touch ID button is built in right here. So in order to log in or use Apple Pay, you actually have to raise your hand and uh, touch your finger up at the top. Come on, there you go. It just logged me in right there. So I have used this for quite a while and I gotta say that Face ID is just way more convenient. All you have to do is tap on the screen, swipe up and you are logged in. You don't have to raise your hand or flip the orientation, anything like that. And it might seem like a little thing and it really is, but you definitely enjoy the extra convenience, especially if you're using it with a keyboard where you just have to tap the space bar. And another big difference is the cameras. And now with the new M1 iPad Pro, we don't have the same camera. We have a brand new one that can actually go ultra wide, which is crazy like this. And that allows the new software to be able to reframe your video, get closer, a lot of cool extra features for FaceTiming and other apps. And before we compare the displays, let's test out the speakers. As I mentioned, the iPad Air has four speaker grills and even more speaker holes, but it only has two speakers. So let's hear how that compares to the iPad Pro. If you have a pair of headphones, put them on and let's take a listen. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and I'll give you guys my opinion. The iPad Pro is definitely louder with those extra two speakers and along with that it has a better bass as well. The Air still sounds good, but it is on the quieter side and Apple is leaving those quad speakers to give you another reason to spend more with the iPad Pro. And now let's compare the displays. Now the actual image sharpness or detail, it's almost identical. Even though this one just has a little bit of a smaller display and reflectivity is also very similar, same coatings, but Apple did limit the iPad Air in terms of brightness. It maxes out at 500 nits compared to 600. And because of that difference, you guys could see that not only is it brighter, the highlights pop more as well because 600 nits is what Apple requires for HDR. So the iPad Air cannot play HDR videos in YouTube, whereas the iPad Pro can. And you guys see how the image just pops so much more. And then if you're using them in bright rooms, that extra brightness does help just a little bit. Now the biggest display difference has to be the 60 hertz versus 120 hertz ProMotion display refresh rate, and that is noticeable in a number of ways. The first way, even here at the desktop, when we're moving through, 
Uh, once you're used to the 120 hertz that's ultra smooth, the 60 hertz just seems a little bit slow, a little bit laggy as you guys can see with our slow motion footage. And along with that, you can also really notice it on websites, if you're reading, everything is just so much smoother and the screen itself is more responsive as well. And if you're somebody that wants to use an Apple Pencil to draw, to write, that 120 hertz allows Apple Pencil to have just nine milliseconds of delay. You guys are looking at some slow motion footage, but to the eye, you literally don't see any delay whatsoever. Now, Apple doesn't officially state the latency for the iPad Air, but you could tell that it is not as smooth. There is a little bit of a delay. It's not a deal breaker, but you can tell the difference. And now it's time to compare the performance. We have a few different benchmarks, an SSD test, and real world tests as well. I'm gonna start out with Geekbench 5, and as you guys can see, we have the A14 here with four gigs of RAM compared to the crazy M1 with eight gigabytes of RAM. And I'm gonna start out with the CPU test. And bam, we have our results. And this is crazy, still doesn't stop amazing me how high the M1 iPad Pro scores. That's almost identical to the MacBook Pro with the fan. We have 7,300 compared to 4,180 on multi-core. That is a difference of 75%. So way better performance. On the single core, it's definitely close. We only have a difference of about 8%. And with that said, even though the iPad Pro is an absolute beast, the A14 is a powerhouse. It is still better than any other tablet out there other than Apple's own tablet. So even Samsung's best gets smoked by the A14, but I can't wait to test it out with real world uh, performance. Now, before I move on, I do wanna go ahead and run the compute test. We're gonna run metal to see the graphics performance. And here we go. That is a huge difference in score. Now, the A14 with the iPad Air, it actually beats out the previous iPad Pros. So it is a great performer, but of course, the eight graphics cores in the M1 scores about 72% higher in terms of graphics performance. So Apple is right, the M1 is is literally supercharging the iPad. And next, I wanna see how the middle score translates to gaming performance. So I have the new Wildlife Extreme benchmark here. I'm gonna enable the unlimited 4K mode. The iPad Pro flew through that test and we have 29.2 frames per second. So let's wait for the iPad Air. And it is finished and look at that score difference. We have 2,355 compared to 4,884 in the FPS going from 29.2 down to 14.1. Now that is very interesting because in the metal test, we had a difference of about 72% uh, between these, but when it goes to gaming, the difference is bigger. This one is literally double the frames per second, slash actually slightly more than double. The next thing that I'm really curious about are the SSD speeds. Did Apple put a much faster uh, storage chip in the Pro model? So I have Jazz Disk Bench here. We're gonna go ahead and run all of the tests. Do you see that speed difference? What? That is crazy. All right, it is true. Apple did GIMP the SSD, the storage chip on the iPad Air. As far as the write speed, we have 589 compared to 1,000. 532 Crazy. massive difference. A random test and the latency is also much faster in terms of write performance. Uh, as far as read, the iPad Pro is faster, but it's not that big of a difference. But I can't believe that the write speed is so much faster with the iPad Pro. Um, and I think that also has something to do with the M1 chip. Of course, we have a lot more RAM in there. It's basically the same chips that go into the MacBook Airs, the MacBook Pros, the new iMacs. It's all on that package compared to a system that is designed uh, as a tablet or even basically as a phone, same A14 that's in the phone. Here I have 50, 42 megapixel raw images opened up. All of these have a bunch of corrections already applied. So these are all edited, which means there's a lot more work that has to happen uh, when you're opening up and switching between them. And they're all stored locally on the machine, not in the cloud, so these are full files. And as far as responsiveness, I'm expecting both of these to be very good. You guys see how quickly uh, they open up right there. And let me go ahead, close that. Let's try to zoom in here on this hot air balloon. Man, both are great. Now, one thing you guys commented in my RAM video 
is that uh, Apple has not yet updated iPadOS to take advantage of that extra RAM. So right now, this iPad is actually being limited and hopefully here in a couple weeks in WWDC, we'll actually see um, some updates to that. But with that said, I wanna go ahead and select all 50 of these edited images and I'm gonna run an export test. I'm using standard sharpening, 90% quality and full size as well, not the default small size and here we are rendering. So it's been two minutes so far and I don't wanna reveal how far we've gotten. I will just say that I'm surprised. I thought that because Lime hasn't been updated, iPad OS hasn't been updated, we don't have the optimizations yet for the iPad Pro, the difference wouldn't be this big but it's pretty significant. All right guys, this test is finally over. Both are now finished. The iPad Pro with the M1 took three minutes and 24 seconds. Go ahead and guess and comment down below how long the iPad Air took. Take a second, pause this video right now, go and comment down below. I wanna hear your guys' thoughts. With that said, <laughs> three minutes, 24 seconds, the iPad Air took seven minutes and pretty much seven minutes and one second. Seven minutes and 96.96, so 701. More than twice as long. And that is really shocking to me. Like I said, iPadOS is not yet optimized. There's more optimizations to be had. There's more RAM available to be used. Right now it's capped. The 8 gig can't be fully used. And with that, in Geekbench, we saw a CPU difference of about 75%. Here, it is over 200%, over 100% basically, more than double the performance in real world use. I was thinking maybe like 30% faster, usually it's less than the benchmarks. And then in the, re in the gaming test, compared to Geekbench, we saw double the performance as well. So that is very interesting. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is open up LumaFusion, which is video editing, and see what kind of a difference we get there. So here I have opened a 4K project. It's just over four minutes long. This is from my vacation. And here I have footage with some different LUTs applied, some different effects, some retiming. And as far as smoothness, for most of it, it's almost identical. And to be honest, I thought it was gonna be identical throughout the whole thing, because both these shapes are very powerful. And if we're going ahead and skipping through, everything looks great. But I did notice that here, where it had 4K 60, and if I hit play here, here I can tell, and I don't know if you guys could tell from above, that we have slight stuttering and frame drops on the iPad Air, whereas the iPad Pro is perfectly smooth. Can you guys see that difference? I don't think it's just the display with ProMotion. You actually see a little bit of frame drop, but it's only this specific 4K60 clip with these effects. Other than that, both these do a great job for 4K editing in LumaFusion. Now, what I wanna do next is go ahead and grab this four minute and nine second project, and I'm going to export it. We have 4K30 with 50 megabit per second. Let's select our file and Bam, we are off. All right guys, look at that. The iPad Pro is almost finished here. Bam, that is incredible. Three minutes and three seconds for that project with a bunch of effects. Let's go ahead and wait for the iPad Air. And bam, the iPad Air is now finished. So we have three minutes and three seconds compared to five minutes and one second. So not twice as fast as in the photo editing, but close to that. And it's interesting because this is using the dedicated encoders on both of these chips, not just the raw CPU and the graphics. A lot of times when you're using these encoders, the difference is minimal, but even here we have a difference of, you know, almost twice as fast with apps that aren't really even optimized yet. So that is really mind blowing to me. Like I said, I was not expecting to see that big of a difference. So with all of those tests finished, what is the final verdict? Well, the iPad Pro costs $200 more than the iPad Air. We have 600 compared to 800, at least based off MSRP. Of course, we have links in the video description where we have sales on these, so you guys could check out the price when you're watching. But is it worth spending $200 more to get the iPad Pro? 
After all these tests, yes, absolutely. Not only do you get the better, brighter display that can play HDR that has the 120 hertz, you get way better CPU performance, way better graphics performance. Even now, when these just launched, before iPadOS gets updated, before apps get updated, that was a massive difference. Of course, you guys heard the speaker differences. We have Face ID, which is a lot more convenient than Touch ID. Um, what else? Pretty much everything is better. The wider camera, the higher quality cameras, the Thunderbolt port that's four times as fast and more capable. I mean, for 200 bucks, you know, previously it was worth it, you know, in my opinion, but now with the M1 and the other updates, this is a massive difference. So with that said, I have links down below to both of these. I have a couple great videos right over there, eight gig versus 16 gig for the iPad Pro. We have the difference between the larger one with the micro LED screen and click that circle above if you guys wanna subscribe and help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers before the end of the year. We would greatly appreciate it. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.